your first game, tip number one, don't plan a project that you think will take you more than a month. <laughs> Over the last six months, I've begun work on my dream game, a 3D mashup of Terraria and World of Warcraft turned into a four-player dungeon action sandbox thing. This is the progress so far. And that's when Jeremy realized he was a dumbass. Bippity boppity, your code is now my property. <laughs> Before we continue, let me explain the progression system. The progression system is split up into multiple tiers, with players starting at tier 1. In order to progress to the next tier, players will have to defeat the boss fight of that tier to advance to the next one. Within the tier are multiple dungeons, a boss fight, and an open world zone the players can explore. By increasing tiers, players will gain access to high level enemies, items, resources, and enemies with a better and more difficult fight mechanic. This is an inventory slot. It contains the item ID and item amount. The item ID references the index that the item is in the item database, which is stored in a scriptable object. The item object in the database has many values, including its type, attribute buffs, graphics ID, which represents a wearable armor component that is stored in the graphics database. When an armor piece is put on, its attributes are applied to the player. The game features a robust ability system, similar to the likes of World of Warcraft. Abilities contain cast time, active time, and a cooldown, which can be shared if it is part of the global cooldown. All abilities inherit from a base class that triggers functionality, depending on the state of the ability, allowing for an easy creation of abilities and workflow. When an ability is created, it needs to be added to the skill tree under one of the four main archetypes, melee, tank, magic, or healing. It can be brought by the player for a skill point, which can be gained from leveling up, killing specific monsters, or reaching certain achievements within the game. This allows for a variety of playstyles to combat the traditional grind of current MMO type games. Once a player gets an ability from the talent tree, it shows up in the player's spellbook and can be dragged into their action bar. This is all done through the eye pointer interface which Unity handles. Bosses are a hot topic for game devs, and their mechanics are a key part to any good game. I have recently begun work on the first boss and its mechanics in the hopes that it will challenge and engage players. When designing the boss and its room, I took a lot of inspiration from the Nurgle faction of Warhammer 40k, as I feel that both the Nurgle faction and my boss encompass the swampy sewer type vibes that I'm looking for. In terms of mechanics, I took a lot of inspiration from games like Dark Souls and World of Warcraft, creating a variety of mechanics that include soaking, dodging, and healing through lots of AoE and damage over time. This challenges the player as they will have to use a variety of skills such as teamwork, movement mechanics, as well as overall raw damage and healing to overcome and defeat the boss. Seeing as this is the first boss of the game, I wanted the mechanics to be fairly simple and easy to understand. A big challenge I ran into quite early on was being able to telegraph to the players the boss's abilities and how the players needed to overcome them to defeat the boss. My current solution is to display text on top of the player's screen that tells them what the ability does and how they can get around it. But I'm looking for a more long-term solution that would more artistic basically telegraph to the players what had to be done. For the future, I'm going to look towards adding more environmental details to the boss fight so that the players can interact with the environment to create more interesting scenarios. The current boss features four abilities, the first one being a very simple ground and pound the players have to move away from using the backflip ability. The second is a falling bottle which causes AoE damage on the ground one when it lands and once again players have to move out of it. The final two abilities make use of the new debuff system, with the first one applying damage to a player that spreads to the players near them in an equal fashion. This means the players have to stand together in order to soak the damage so that it doesn't kill one player and wipe them out. The final ability is a simple damage over time effect that is applied to all players. This makes use of the multi-class system, which allows for certain scenarios such as this one where every player is taking damage to allow all players to leverage abilities from the healer class. This encourages a variety of playstyles and allows players use of abilities to adapt to the situation at hand. That's it for this video. This being my first devlog that I'm posting to YouTube, as well as my first video, so let me know how I did. If you'd like to support the channel, I'd really appreciate a subscription and a like on the video. See you next time.